Hello and welcome to Project Vayner episode 68 for the second time. Uh, we already did this um, live episode a hour ago, two hours ago. It didn't li really worked as planned, so now we are doing a second try. Hopefully everything is working now. Uh, I'm just going to make sure that the audio is going through so that you can hear me. And it looks like it's working. Yes, so... Uh, uh, yeah, just to make a short introduction, the this is uh, Project Vayner, the documentation of my journey towards getting a job at Vayner Media in New York City. Every month I'm doing a live episode and I have a new guest every time that uh, uh, that I invite to bring value to my audience. Uh, we often talk about video and uh, video marketing and YouTube and how to grow your channel and how to build a business and also to have a goal that you strive for and the things you the challenges you meet along the way and this time we have a guest from Australia and uh, we I'm not gonna uh, say so much about that so I'm just gonna show the video that I've done uh, so that you can see a little introduction and then we're gonna jump into the live so here's a little video about today's uh, guest Hey, I'm Sarah Nguyen, your online marketing strategist, and I want to make tech and social media easier for awesome entrepreneurs like yourself. I'm going to talk about some of the key nuggets from David Goggins' book, Can't Hurt. How do you actually create social media content? Are you looking for the best 4K webcam? What are some of the best social media apps and social media tools? So you're curious about Facebook Live, how to use Facebook Creator Studio, or how to create an animated GIF or video. What I want to do is to go to the content library, side by side, so you can see both of the footage, like a little orange or brown flag, and a 12 inch LED ring light, scheduling tools, some stock libraries. You take it out of the box, attach the filters. After you've logged into Canva, select the animated social media, this live episode again hello and thank you for having me the second time around um yeah apologies for the first one if for everyone who saw that that was uh unfortunately just the nature of live you you make your offering to the live stream god mm -hmm. and then you pray that things will go well and sometimes they don't yep. but um we're doing it again so we can still give you guys that content and that value so i'm excited to be here thank you so much for having me Right, cool. And I'm just checking the audio right now to make sure that everything is working. But it looks like everything is working now from the start. Um, in our last live, it took <laughs> maybe 15 minutes until we, re we realized that uh, the people that were watching couldn't hear your audio. But now it seems it's to sad, work but... fine. Yeah, so we just hope for the best right now. <laughs> uh, we just got a comment here. All good now. Cool, cool. Yes. Excellent. All right. So maybe in this uh, live, I will be able to to listen a little better and not uh, focus on all the <laughs> problems <laughs> coming up in the software. Uh, so yeah, tell us a little bit about uh, who you are and what you're doing. So my name is Sarah Nguyen and I help small business owners build and grow their businesses using social media. And my focus right now is on creating courses so that people can learn with me. And I'm really excited, um, I guess, to be here and just to have this, this conversation today because um, when I first started, um, I guess, my business journey, it was just like everyone else's journey. It was figuring out what I wanted to do and how I was going to deliver value. And when I first started, and I realized I said that twice, mm. 
it really was just figuring out how am I going to make it as a business owner working um, after leaving co corporate life? And it was how do I deliver value? And at that time, I was offering services. Mm -hmm. So I was doing social media and content production services because that was how I could translate value in the quickest way and make money and earn a living. Um, since then, and it's been a while now, I think I started that about 10 years ago. Um, I've evolved from doing um, services to creating course content mm. because it really is what I'm really passionate about doing. I love creating content and I love creating courses to help people to learn and to be able to implement for themselves. Right, cool. And what are some of the things that you have um learned along the way the the stuff that you have changed yourself with your videos that you're creating so when i first started particularly on um youtube so i really believe in video as being a really powerful i guess medium for people to be able to utilize to get themselves out there to be visible and to be able to deliver a message. And for me, when I first started with video, I was doing it a lot for clients, whether that was helping them with their live streams or helping them produce YouTube videos. And when I started doing it for myself and to you know promote my own courses and my own services, what well, I think I went through the same journey as everyone else. It was, okay, how do I make this work for myself? And when I look back, when I first started seriously on YouTube, well, I wouldn't even say it was serious, but for the last, probably for the first year or two years of YouTube, I looked back at how many videos I released mm -hmm. and maybe across the two years, it was about 10 to 12, which is not a lot and it's not consistent. But in 2019, now, when I look back at the last year, I that was when I said, I want to be better at this and I want to really use this platform. Mm -hmm. And I've released at least 30 videos this year alone. And I know that's not massive, but that's a lot better than 10 over two years. Mm -hmm. And that's where I saw a lot of growth. So I started seeing a lot of growth on YouTube as a platform when I started getting consistent. Um, and when I started creating content that was really um intentional so it was videos that had keyword research done so i knew there was traffic coming to those videos because um, the data told me so so i think that's been a big evolution of you know learning how to use youtube mm -hmm. and then being able to keep it going sustain it by creating content with actual traffic right and uh, what would you say is like a a minimum amount of videos that someone should produce for to make sure they're growing but not to set the bar too high for themselves that they can actually accomplish that i really think it um it comes down to what works for you mm. um whatever that number is so there was a period of time where i tried very badly and we were doing my team and i were releasing three videos a week and it was the worst experience and so we did that for about two weeks before i pulled the plug on that madness because it was burning me out being able to create that content in time it was burning my team out in helping me produce those videos and no one was happy and for me it was realizing at that time that we're not ready for three a week as much as i'd love to be able to do that um three a week was too much for us so we scaled it back to one a week mm -hmm. and we've been able to be consistent with that and that's where we saw growth right. so i think it really is about testing out what works for you mm -hmm. and being okay with um adapting that so if i had said you know what i'm going to do three a week no matter what like i don't think i'd continue doing videos because it started to really become this stressful grind so finding that in between and being okay with adapting um, a friend of mine who's also a youtube creator she was doing three a week um, and she scaled back down now to one a fortnight because she had a baby and you know there's a lot going on in her life so but that's okay as well so i think it really is about finding that balance that works for you. Ideally, I think one a week is good. One a fortnight is okay, but really just find that balance and then to grow from there. Yeah, and uh, when I have looked at my channel and and uh, the results that I've gotten is uh, exactly what you're describing. It's even if I'm not publishing every week or multiple times per week, just that I'm trying to publish uh, consistently is really helping the growth and I can also see a lot of improvement thanks to the live episodes um, YouTube seems to promote the live videos I don't know if it's because it's increasing the watch time uh, so and that's one of the things to 
that YouTube really likes uh, to to promote a channel or to recommend videos from a channel if the person have a lot of watch time. So uh, yes. it doesn't necessarily has to be a lot of views, but they want to see that when someone is clicking your video, are they actually wat- watching through it? And how much are, are they watching or are they just clicking and then uh, going to the next video uh, on another channel? So, uh, s- yeah, so from what I've seen, it's the live doing live videos and posting consistently. Uh, but I also think like titles and the thumbnails is really important. Uh, what would you say? How how? big impact do you think the titles and the thumbnails has on the video a lot so um when i look at my channel and it's always i think it's always a good idea to look at your own analytics and to see what videos are performing the ones that um, have done really well that have had a hundred thousand views um, those are the ones that are very well optimized and that um, i think people tend to go start on the platform and they struggle between finding that balance between creating content that is around keywords and then creating content that they want. But I think you can always find that happy medium. Some people struggle because, um, you know, they think that by creating, by using these keywords, they're forced to create content in a certain way. But I don't think it's about that at all. I think it's really the opposite. It's what do you want to create? And then what keywords can you find to back that up yeah. so that your video can actually be found in the news feed? I see a lot of people when they first start, um, their videos optimized really badly. And it's like, that can't possibly be a keyword that gets traffic. Yeah. And so there are a lot of good videos that don't get seen because people aren't optimizing them mm. well. Um, so I think it's definitely worth doing that part of doing your keyword research, optimizing the title, the tags, the description, because at the end of the day as well, with YouTube, we don't know if they're going to rank a video or not. But if we haven't got the, I guess, the standards, the best practice things in place, then we have zero chance. So it's definitely very important to at least have the best practice, which is your you know, um, keyword research done and incorporate that into your title, into the description and your tags. Yeah, and uh, one tool that I'm using um, that is called uh, TubeBuddy. I know I mentioned mm-hmm. this when we tried this live um earlier today but i think i said youtube tracker i mix mixed them up mixed them up but anyway there is a tool called tubebuddy that i think a lot of youtubers use to optimize their uh their tags and there is a lot of other uh tools that they provide for your channel to to see how your tags are ranking compared to other videos and uh yeah it's easier to search and see what results are you getting from different titles and then you can if you have a topic you can try different titles uh, around the same topic but just like formulate the meaning in different ways to see what will get the best result and um, I think also one thing that is important to know when you're creating a video is to when you have those keywords you want to rank for and you see that the competition isn't that high on those keywords uh, you want to have them in the title and in the video description and in the tag so you make sure you repeat them and and show like the, the search engine which is YouTube in this case that it's very relevant video for those keywords and uh, yeah like you were saying i think just getting the like the whole picture of creating something that you enjoy doing like start there and then to also trying to optimize that in a good way instead of you don't have to only do what you like or only optimize you have, the best thing is when you can combine them because when you have something you're interested in it's a higher chance that you're doing it that you continue to actually do it Um, but then you want to make sure you get the most out of every video uh, of course by optimizing it Uh, but I know that um, you make a lot of uh, Facebook live as as well Uh, so what are like some of the differences that you've seen for making YouTube live and making Facebook live 
So I I love both YouTube Live and Facebook Live. People, a lot of times people ask me, which one is better? And I don't really think one is better than the other because they're both different. Um, and I love YouTube Live because, as you said, you can create this live stream and then you can optimize it like you would a normal YouTube video. And then you've got this video that ranks and has organic traffic after the broadcast. Mm. Um, Facebook Live, I really love, particularly for beginners just getting started with business and promoting their, themselves because it's really easy to use. I find YouTube Live a little bit more complicated, YouTube. Um, mm. It's really not intuitive. Um, but whereas Facebook Live is so much easier to use both the desktop um, interface and the mobile interface much easier it's literally like um have the latest version on your phone and you can start going pretty much so i don't think it's about one being better than the other they're both different and serve their purposes youtube's great for um the organic traffic facebook live is great for being easy to use and the other thing great about facebook live is that you can then leverage that live stream and run ads to it quite cheaply to increase your visibility so i think they're both really powerful things that you can use um together mm -hmm. and now with all the software available when it goes correctly unlike the day we've had today you can actually live stream to youtube and facebook at the same time if yeah. you've made your offerings to the live stream gods it will all go well unlike the day we've had today mm -hmm. so i really love both of them and encourage people to try them out um, because facebook live is definitely a really powerful tool um, to increase your reach and so is youtube live yeah and uh one thing that is um, has been coming more the last two years maybe is uh, uh, the growth of uh, facebook watch also so yes. even if you're yes. posting something in the feed and it's kind of disappearing after one day uh, or one week or something because that's maybe the main differences on posting something on social media compared to posting it on youtube because on YouTube you can search for it two years from now and still find it if it's relevant and good optimized. Uh, and I think Facebook Watch will help the visibility of the videos that you're posting on Facebook because you can go in there and search and, and find those videos there. Uh, so And it, it will be interesting to see how Facebook Watch will develop during the following years also it will definitely if definitely. it will turn more into a search engine where you can search for videos uh, just like youtube or yeah uh, and also um there's a lot of interesting things just in general going on with video and and how how tiktok for example is growing uh, mm -hmm. with the reach that you have there um i think i've posted a couple of videos there and some of them have like 50 views and then I had like one video that was going crazy that had like 200,000 views and it's oh, wow. nothing I've I, I don't even edited that or anything it's just things that I filmed on my phone and I've seen the, that on so many other channels mm. as well uh, is TikTok anything you have tried or that you are looking more into or I haven't started TikTok this year, um, only because I think Facebook Live and YouTube Live keep me busy mm. enough, but it's definitely a platform that I'd be interested in trying out probably next year. I think that's another good note to um, talk about as well in terms of growing with video. Um, there's, you know, a lot of, uh, there's a lot of ways of thinking about this. Some people are like, you should be on 50 different platforms at the same time. Mm. Um, I think I don't think there's a right or wrong answer. I think it's about finding that balance that's right for you. Yeah. If you can do 50 video platforms at one time, good for mm. you. <laughs> like amazing. But for me and most people that's quite overwhelming. I think having the for me having Facebook Live and YouTube Live as my main video platforms and then supporting that with um, Instagram is how I is enough for me and quite um, keeps me busy as it is, but um, I think the, the main advice, particularly when just you when you're just getting started, one at a time, maybe two, and then just grow from there. Like add as you get more comfortable. And if you don't end up having a lot, that's okay too. I'd rather see people do you know less platforms well than lots of platforms really badly. Yeah, and I I think that um, only like one thing to have in mind is to that some platforms that are 
coming up and there are still new and people maybe are waiting for because they are not sure if it's relevant to post on that platform mm -hmm. uh, a lot of times it has a lot of reach in the beginning and then after a while when mm -hmm. the interest goes up the reach goes down and they kind of force you to pay for ads and similar stuff to to show up like the same way it has been doing on instagram where you had a lot mm -hmm. more uh, organic reach uh, before and now you basically have to uh, to pay to get the same reach um, so it's a good thing to be curious but also to have a good plan or of what you're doing and have like a long-term goal with it because i i see uh, i see when i'm working with companies that a lot of times they don't have the um, uh, patience enough for create for working with video over a longer period of time it's usually that they create uh, a few videos and they do it for a couple of months and then if they don't see the result directly uh, they are not sure if they are going to continue or not but uh, instead of like having the patience and and trying different things and just trust in the process and in the mm -hmm. building of their brand um, do you do you feel that when you're helping businesses that they are have the patience and that they are curious in trying new things or do you feel that they are still very skeptical to 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 work with video um for over a longer time i i find it really interesting so i find like there's um it, people who are really passionate about trying it um and but they're really afraid of being on camera and i understand that i really understand that like it's really intimidating when you first get when you're first getting started and then just having to see yourself on camera let alone trying all the different things like live and things like that but um for those people i think it's about just enduring that pain because the only way to get better and the only way to get more confident is to keep doing it yeah. and to accept that things are going to go wrong like our live stream was not perfect today but i think we got there yeah. in the end so i think there's, there's that group of people who are really passionate about it but a bit afraid yeah. but um We'll, we'll push through it. And then I, I do agree. I think there's also on the other end, people who think of video as an afterthought, as opposed to what I believe is that they should be thinking of video as this, the center point um, and creating like one main piece of content from video and then building out from that, as opposed to just, oh, we should create a video in addition to the whatever that we created. So I think there's two types of people um, in that sense, but I definitely agree that yeah, video is not people, although there are a lot of people on the platform and a lot of people using it mm. um, in terms of businesses, they're probably don't, a lot of businesses aren't viewing, aren't seeing the, the real power of video mm. and using it to the best of their ability. Yeah, I totally agree. But I also see that uh, people kind of think of video in the wrong way. They, tr they yep. see it as something that will automatically give them a lot of views and a, a lot of leads and clients uh just because well they see video. it as like a commercial yeah well they see yeah. it as a commercial and it's like well no it's evolved i think yeah. at the very beginning video was very much just commercials mm. you know just ads but now it's like no it's content it's you know how yeah. do you deliver value through video so it's evolved a lot and the way but businesses haven't all quite understood that as you've mentioned mm. and i i i feel that um they they are watching they are looking at video more like oh this format is going to do it for us instead of focusing on what are they trying to tell so if yes. they are focusing more on what knowledge do i want to tell just the just the same way they are they are doing with like blog posts and the white papers uh, if they start there and then figure out afterwards like what type of format do i present this knowledge in the best way and use video there as a tool instead of saying oh we need to create a video and then after that oh what we should what should we have in this video exactly uh, exactly so, video first yeah <laughs> we're a little bit biased but yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's also it also helps a lot on uh, on ranking like it's much yes. better to do a video about something than writing something about it because um yeah go both google and youtube really 
or YouTube, obviously, because it's a video platform, but uh, g Google really like favorites video over other types of content. Mm -hmm. So, and you sure. can also, I think people aren't as creative as they could be. They could have a video where they use the, uh, the things that are said in the video and write it down and create a blog post from that. And you can also mm -hmm. use pieces from the video and share it uh, as like short trailer videos for the longer uh, video. Uh, so I think there's a lot of potential uh, that people are maybe not thinking about. Uh, but if we if we go into like uh, YouTube as a topic and how you have grown your channel over the last couple of years, what are some of the things that you have noticed with growing your YouTube channel, like th some things that you have changed that really helped you increased, like besides uh, posting consistently, what are like some other things that you learned? Um, I think a big, a big part of it is making it sustainable for you. So I was watching YouTube stories or I can't remember which stories it was. And it was of a really big creator. So they've got over a million subscribers and it was a behind the scenes of them creating content. And what I noticed was that they were really burnt out. Like they were not happy and they were not enjoying it. Mm. And then I looked at how much content they were putting out. So they were doing daily stories. Um, I think they were doing at least one live stream to both platforms and then they're releasing three videos a week and immediately mm -hmm. they're full time. So content is, you know, their business, but that's way too much. And I think a, a big thing that I've learned is the, you know, you need to keep it fun. So you need to keep it at a level that um, it doesn't overtake your life and that you still enjoy it. Yeah. And so that's about, I guess, um, you know, how many you release, but it's also about the content that you're releasing. Mm -hmm. So if you end up, you know, having to produce a lot of content that you're not enjoying anymore. What's the point? Yeah. What's the point in doing that? It shows in your video. And like, as I said, like this creator is really big and I'm not gonna mention their name because don't want to burn that. Yeah. But um, yeah, just to see how they, that, like I remember watching them at the very beginning to now and they're not enjoying it because it's too much. And whether, you know, there's other things going on and they're not enjoying that, what they're creating anymore yeah. is about finding that balance. And I think for me, um, creating tutorials and creating product reviews are things that I really enjoy and things that have grown the channel. Um, I don't think my videos are perfect by by any means, um, but I cr enjoy creating them and that makes it sustainable. So that's probably the biggest one is to be able to make it sustainable by doing what you like um, and then the rest of it, optimizing it and, you know, being consistent comes comes after. But to keep that as a, mm -hmm. as a focus of, you know, it's, it's meant to be fun. Like video is meant to be fun not meant to be this stressful thing that you resent like yeah. life's too short for that yeah definitely and as you as you were saying it shines through so much also if like you see if the person enjoys doing it or if it's just doing it because he he or she kind of has to do it yes and uh, and probably mm probably the, the the other lesson or thing is to let go of perfect particularly mm -hmm. when it comes to live streaming as we've seen today yeah. it not like we practiced this like we met yesterday everything yeah. was working perfectly and then when we went live everything crashed audio mm -hmm. didn't come through it just didn't want to happen and i think a younger version of me would have been really upset yeah. um but now like i'm kind of like you know what it went wrong we did the best we could and we just kept, well, we redid it. We're redoing it now. So it's not the end of the world. There are worse things that can happen than the technology failing. And mm. I've also seen, I've also been on live streams or web like webinars where there's like hundreds to a thousand people and stuff goes wrong there. So I don't feel yeah. so bad where, you know, it goes wrong for, for us at, you know, our, our channel levels. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that people, um, what I've noticed in, from, all the videos coming up in, in the feed on different social media platforms that a lot of times people often appreciate the like the transparency or when people are making mistakes and exactly. everything is that's going relatable perfect. right yeah exactly it just shows that you are a human also yes and you also make mistakes and it's that could actually help someone too because maybe they stumble upon the same challenges along the way and they can see that you have the same 
uh, challenges and they can see how you solve it. Uh, so I think just trying to be yourself and trying to show the mistakes and not just the uh, like perfect end result uh, really helps to also build a relationship with the audience and yourself. That I just want to tap onto that because yeah. a, a question I ask about I, a question that I ask a bigger YouTuber and a question that people ask me is how do you be different and how do you stand out because mm. YouTube or is still a competitive space. There's a you're competing against a lot of creators, a lot of videos, and yeah, the common question I am asked is how do how do you stand out? How do you be different? And mm. I I genuinely think that the answer to that is to be yourself. Um, and it's mm. you know to let people see that you're imperfect, to let people know that you know what things didn't go wrong, and you know today was not the best day, mm. and but this is what I learned from it so that they can go on that journey from you and they can see your personality and they can see your quirks. Mm. And at the same time with that, people may be like, well, wouldn't that deter people? I'm like, well, you know what, if that deters people, then those people were never your audience. You know, they were never going to connect with you or buy from you if they couldn't handle you at this moment. So I, I, I think it's mm. the way to stand out and the way to be different is just to be yourself and to let people see you as you are flaws and all. Mm. Uh, and I, I heard something that uh, about like personality and th that really stuck to me and that was someone saying that people come to a YouTube channel because of interest but they stay they stay because of personality. Yes. And I think that's uh, one thing to keep in mind that it's not only about what you're talking about but it's also about who you are as a person. So exactly. it could be like everything from like how you are talking to your dialect yes. to your uh your dog coming in in the background interrupting yes. <laughs> or something like not something that you have has that n no one else has because it's yes. you and your personality and where you are doing the video from and how you are doing the video so yeah, just uh, embrace your personality instead of trying to be perfect all the time, I think. It's interesting mm. because, we, you know, we talk about like personality and, you know, I um, a couple of weeks ago, I reached 10,000 subscribers on my channel, which I was really excited about. And I, I know that 10,000 isn't 100,000, which is a big milestone and mm. or a million. But for me, 10,000 was really exciting because... I started the, the channel from scratch and I didn't have big influencers who referred me all these people. It really was a result of consistently creating content that um, was very intentional that I had researched. Mm. Um, where was I going with this? Sorry. Um, and I think also saying I've, I've lost myself in the train of thought. Um, <laughs> but, but the thing, but the thing with being on video and um, letting people see your flaws is mm. that, they get to know you, right? And then that's how you, that's how you differentiate yourself, and that's how you build a connection. And it's not always perfect. And I'm not saying to go the other spectrum and just to be a hot mess all the time mm. and to not show up and to not do your preparation. I'm just saying, like, there's a balance between that. Mm. And I think YouTube is that channel where you can be yourself and grow. Mm. Yeah, and I I think that like as long as you respect your viewers and Yes. If you have a schedule that you actually stick to that schedule or try to stick to that schedule and you listen to what the viewers like and you look into the analytics, as long as you do that, I think you can do pretty much anything. Uh, like I, I um, respecting your viewers is a big one, right? So yeah. it's that balance. And I remember like I was listening to someone talk about Mark Zuckerberg mm. and when he first started and he was pitching to investors, mm. he used to show up in his, you know, tracksuit pants and thongs yeah. and like it was just casually and it was just him. And yeah. I, that's what I think there's a balance. And I think yeah. actually that's a little bit disrespectful, mm. you know, like you're here, you, like for him, he was there to pitch to get money and he couldn't even put on like a pair of shoes. He just walked there in sandals. <laughs> so I think that there definitely is a balance. Show yeah. your personality, but like... Like not too raw. Like yeah. show them and be relatable, but you know have have respect for your audience and do the preparation and deliver good value mm. and content. Yeah, and if if we uh, like connect that to video content, I think it's it's uh, 
like you're saying trying to find the right balance of how can you be yourself and show your personality but also and uh, also deliver value and i think it's really important if you're a business and you want to build your brand and want to like show the the business personality to have it set from the start and know like what are your core values in the business what do you stand for how do you want to be how do you want people to talk about your business and then mm -hmm. try to like think about that when creating the video but also like the knowledge in the video focusing on the the stuff that you that you know and the the, the common questions that you often get asked yes definitely um and uh, yeah so how do you, how do you see when you are helping businesses that um do you see that they are trying i don't know if i asked this in this live or if it was in the second live so uh tell me if i already asked this question but yeah we've covered this one we covered this one in this live yeah yeah maybe we have uh right but we were talking about uh youtube and growing the youtube channel and i know yes. in the in the last live that we did we yep. uh, tried to Uh, make like a summary with the five uh, takeaways from the stuff that you have learned with your YouTube channel when growing that uh, yes for like beginners that want to get started on YouTube uh, like what what are like five things that they should think about to grow their channel so I think the first thing to take note is that um, when you're creating videos you need to find that balance between content that you love and also backing that up with um, keyword research to make sure that um, you have videos that are actually being searched so that you can get traffic and grow. So that's probably the first thing to do. Um, the second thing to do, I think, is to make sure that you do implement be YouTube best practice or video best practice. So once you've got all your keyword research, um, make sure that it's in the title, it's in the description, it's in the tags, and that you've optimized the video to the best of your ability because that's the best way, that's the best chance you have of actually showing up in YouTube search. Um, the third thing would probably be to have a content calendar um, and a schedule and whatever that looks like for you um, and, and to try to be consistent. And just to know that you probably won't get it right the first go. As I said, I started with three videos a week and that almost destroyed me. So mm. we're down to one a week, but it's about finding what works for you and adjusting it as you go. But having a calendar so you can be consistent is really important. Um, having fun is probably the fourth point because mm. Life's too short to not have fun. And yeah. video, video is fun. I don't, yeah, video is meant to be fun. It's meant to be mm. this creative outlet. It's not meant to be this grind. And the fifth point, true to today, is to let go of perfect. Things will go wrong. It's technology. It's video. It's social media. It's business. Things will go wrong. And to be okay with that because it's not going to be perfect and things will go wrong, but life goes on. So I think that's definitely my five wrap-ups. Yeah, great. Yeah. Uh... I also think that uh, one thing that maybe people forget when working with video because they it's always so much focus on like the result and how good they want the videos to be and what they want to reach with their YouTube channel and the subscribers and everything. I think it's a lot about personal development as well. I mean, yes. just filming yourself if that's what you want to do or if you're doing animation and uh, and just watching that again and kind of see yourself from a different perspective and learn from that like how how are you sitting when you're speaking how are you speaking what's your energy level how are you looking into mm -hmm. the camera um, like all of those details that you don't really notice when you don't work with video so I think that there's a lot of things to to learn about yourself while working with video so see that if people think if people make videos and have that in mind to and try to think okay i'm gonna uh, develop like i'm gonna develop as a person when doing this video and try to focus on that instead of trying to make the perfect video i think they can can take steps for each and every video and Yes. And that, in the end, will give them results in 
in uh, instead of trying to make the perfect video. And I think also to understand that like the types of videos that you create like they will evolve over time. So Peter mm. P- Peter McKinnon recently released a video and he was like, "You know what? I'm going to release a video sometimes about um, you know, photography, sometimes mm. I'm going to release a video about coffee making because it's what I want to do." Yeah. So for me, it's like I do tutorials, I do tech reviews, I do live streams where yeah. it's just marketing content and I think, "You know what? It's it's your own platform, so you mm. get to choose and you get to adapt how you want and, you know, don't let anyone tell you what content you should create. You should be creating the content that you enjoy." Yeah. And I, I would honestly say that I almost prefer starting before you're re- uh, ready for it because yep. then after a while, when you're looking back on the first videos that you've done, the if the first videos are bad and then you see that oh, the latest videos is much better than the first videos, you can see the development of yourself and it, that will motivate you to make more videos if you will and you will hopefully de- still develop in the same pace. So instead of trying to wait and and start at a super high level, just start where you are and try to develop along the way instead, I think. And I, and I, don't, I don't think we're ever really ready. Um, yeah. I don't think I was ready when I first started. I don't think I'm perfect now by any yeah. means. I don't think same my here. live streams are perfect. I don't think my, <laughs> um, my produced YouTube videos are perfect. There are times I'm looking, mm, that could have been different, but mm. it's good enough. And that, that's, the, that's, the, that's the thing, like it's social media is evolving and so mm. will you as a creator and as a business as well. And what that looks like, you know, who knows, but it's, it's about being okay with that change. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I think that it, it also creates uh, space for other people to grow if you can show that you make mistakes and it's okay it's kind of uh, helps other to think that oh maybe it doesn't has to be perfect exactly exactly um, so yeah I think we covered a lot of uh, questions during this live um, if I can just throw in one last question is there anything that uh, if we aim this question towards uh, businesses that want to start with video that maybe hasn't worked so much with the video before, is okay. there any uh, common mistakes that you have seen uh, that businesses do that they should avoid w- avoid when starting with uh, video in their marketing? Um, a couple of mistakes. I think one is trying to make it all be perfect. And this is particularly for small business owners who they see these big creators and these big businesses Mm. have these highly produced videos and I think they need to be the same. Mm. Other people and try to do that. And it doesn't come across the way it should because they're not being themselves. So that's a big mistake um, I see people make. They try to copy other people and they don't be themselves. I think the other one is um, getting overwhelmed and getting upset when it doesn't work out well um, is another mistake mm. because I know I did that a lot in the very beginning. I used to have meltdowns, but mm. I, I like to think I've evolved since then and I just accept it as part of business and as uh. part of you know, um, marketing and life that things won't go wrong. Things will go wrong and they won't always go right. So I think that's mm. a big mistake that people get caught there mm. because they have a bad live stream and then they'll never do it again. It's like, well, no, I think you should try again. Mm. Um, yeah, so those are probably two of the biggest mistakes. And then the third one is probably when they first get started, they're really excited and they're really motivated and they go too hard and they burn out. Mm. So that's that's a big mistake I see a lot of creators make and a lot of business owners make is that they try to do that video every day or three videos a week and it's too much. So it really is about, you know, testing out what works and and being okay with scaling it back. Who cares if you do three uh, three times a week and then you have to scale it back to one a fortnight? Who cares as long as you're mm. consistent and as long as you tried, you know? So I think that's another mistake that people make. So it's all about evolving and it's all about just going like knowing that this is a moving target and mm. that we're just growing with this platform. Yeah. And one thing that I was starting to think about now when you said this about uh, uh, not being afraid of mistakes and trying to make things perfect, like if people could just look at marketing the same way they look at sales, yes, it would be a completely different game because in sales, I don't know how many percentage of the people you call that actually becomes client and how many percentage that you call that never ends up in anything. 
but mm -hmm. for some reason when you're working with marketing you kind of want to see result you expect to see result on everything that you do and i i see that i feel that businesses aren't trying enough things and they are too afraid to like throw money away but they can put a lot of money into sales and other stuff uh Mm. and have patience there but they ha don't have the same patience in the marketing so just mm -hmm. trying more uh, things i think on both trying different platforms and also different formats uh, posting at different times on the same platform mm -hmm. uh, using different titles and different uh, thumbnails uh, because on different platform it is different thumbnails if in, even if it's maybe not called thumbnail uh, but just the first couple of seconds, try to draw attention to the video and try different ways there. You can even like post the same video on multiple platforms at different times, but change the first second or change the title, like A-B test stuff just to see the difference. Hmm. So yeah, I think that's uh, just trying more stuff and having more patience, I, I think is something that we, have been coming back to during this live a lot. definitely definitely um so for if people want to uh, um see more of your stuff and look into your youtube channel where what are like your social media accounts and your channel if they want to find you um we'll put the links in the description but my channel yeah. is um miss sarah newen mm -hmm. i'm also um, really badly on Instagram at it's Sarah, New Sarah Newen as well. So, and on Facebook at Sarah Newen online. So yeah. Yeah. Cool. And I've been looking through, uh, some of the stuff that you've done. It's a lot of really valuable stuff there and it's a lot of different Dude. things as well, like both, uh, um, towards YouTube and Facebook. And I know you have like product reviews and even some like book reviews as well. So uh a lot of knowledge to pick up there and thank you uh, i like the like key takeaways from the books that you're reading uh, i think that's really thank valuable you. so yeah definitely go and check out her channel uh, like you said the links is down in the video description uh, so uh, you can find it there uh, and for everyone that has been watching thanks thank you so much for watching uh, thanks for the patience with the audio <laughs> problems that we had um, and uh, most of all thanks to Sarah for joining this live thanks for having me it's been a, a lot of fun we got there in the end yeah finally. So <laughs> appreciate appreciate everyone and thank you for inviting me to be here yeah no problem I will it was a pleasure having you Right, so uh, yeah, thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.